This is Ratatouille. I think it should be considered one of the greatest films of all time. And I'm ready to tell you all about it. Because when it comes to the great era of animated films, I look back to the late 2000s when things like Ratatouille was released. I've always enjoyed the art of the culinary if that makes any sense to you, watching food being made and enjoying consuming such quality in my mouth, and Ratatouille encapsulates everything about that showcasing the beauty of art in more ways than one, in terms of animation, food, and storytelling. And this is why I think this film is one of the greatest that Pixar has ever made. Ratatouille is a film geared towards the message that anyone can cook, or more importantly, anyone can be talented in any field they choose to be in, represented by the most unlikely of characters in a rat who manages to impress humans with its stellar 5-star cooking. It's that if anyone has the courage to pursue their dreams, they will definitely be good at it, but that is if your passion and desire is there for it. And its villains represents what the status quo says to be otherwise, that you already have to be born in that role to achieve such success unless shown otherwise in the most surprising surprising of ways. It also helps that this movie showcases several adult themes in an animated kids movie, which seems to be a specialty of Brad Bird with the likes of The Incredibles coming out before this and having a stellar soundtrack created by the likes of Michael Giacchino, truly capturing the beauty and sights of the kitchen and all of Paris in its glory. This movie begins itself placed in the French countryside at this old lady's house introducing us to Remy who has this special heightened sense of taste and smell, an ability he wishes he could do more with when his father, the leader of the Plan, wants to adhere to the principles of being a rat, surviving and taking out the garbage that humans have lived so that they can live. Which of course, due to Remy's acute abilities, allows him to detect what's good and bad for them, putting him as the primary taste tester for poison in the rat colony. I think the great thing about the beginning is how it represents what we experience in our own families, with Remy's dad wanting to do things by the book on how rats live or Remy wants to do something more with the talent he has. He doesn't want to be feel shackled by their own conventions of living with what else he actually has to offer in this world and he gets to show us exactly that when he finds natural ingredients outside and how he acts more human rather than what a rat is supposed to be, which puts him more removed from that group like a child who acts and thinks differently from his own family. Of course, pushing for this search can only lead to more dangerous curiosity towards the ladies' kitchen and it actually gives us a moment through a documentary on the television about Remy's idol, Chef Gusteau, who teaches a lesson about how anyone can cook. You must be imaginative, strong heart try things that may not work. And you must not let anyone define your limits because of where you come from. Your only limit is your soul. What I say is true. Anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. His words reflect greatly upon the entire story. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. It matters if your heart is in the right place to do the things you want, and that's what makes you great. That you can accomplish wonders in the world, and the only thing that's stopping you is yourself. A lesson that Remy actually takes to heart, but one that quickly becomes dark because of how a food critic himself ruined Gusto's reputation, his restaurant, and his heart as well when he died after such a devastation from Anton Ego representing a sense of vanity and arrogance of an individual who scoffs at the idea that one can achieve such great things. And that's a challenge that Remy would have to live with competing against for the rest of the movie. Alongside alerting the old lady that the rats actually live in her house, where because of his very actions the whole entire colony gets exposed and now they all have to leave. Separating himself from his family when he falls behind with Gusto's book and has to deal with the fact that he is now all alone. This is meant to heartfully showcase the direct consequences of pursuing something where sometimes it actually separates you from the things that matter most in your life. Which in this case is family here. But the words of Gusto from the book encourage Remy to look beyond what lies ahead, that dwelling on the past will never allow you to move forward to the future and what is lost can always be found again, and in order to do that you must go up and look around. This spurs him onto a large search through this dark large apartment, presenting himself with various scenarios of humans doing who knows what on a constant climb of both rat and music to search for what exactly is out there, where it finally reveals that he made it to Paris, the city of his dreams, La Vie Lumière, the city of lights growing bright from the Eiffel Tower to the streets below before panning towards Gusteau's, his favorite restaurant where he finally gets to take a tour, where we ourselves finally get our own personal tour of the kitchen and our second main character of Linguini. This is one of my most favorite scenes in a Pixar film that showcased the hustle and bustle of busy four, formerly five star kitchen. The sprinkling of ingredients, the roaring fires of the grill, it truly encapsulates everything that goes into the art of preparing food and Remy gets to taste 
piece of that too from the outside. And we learn here that Linguini is seeking a job after his mother, Renata, a friend of Gusto, passes and writes in her will that she wants him to have a job at Gusto's restaurant. It also serves as an intro to our main villain, Chef Skinner. Played by Bilbo Baggins himself, he is the former sous chef under Gusto who now runs the restaurant, who cares nothing but to maintain his status in his position and uses Gusto's name to sell a brand of frozen food to enrich himself. His character represents everything that goes against shaping great artists or encouraging anyone to pursue their goals by having mediocrity compete in its place to pad his own pockets. And of course, they do hire him right there as they need a garbage boy. We then cut to Remy testing his knowledge about what is in the kitchen in front of the ghost of Gusto or the figment of his imagination, an impeccable knowledge that only a top tier chef could have while looking down at Linguini as a simple plongeur garbage boy. In that scene, Gusto himself points out that anyone like him is actually an important part of the kitchen, where of course, to some like Remy, they say that just because everyone can cook, not everyone should, finally looking down on him discovering that he messed up the soup and that causes him to fall down on this wild chase to exit in a field of gigantic to humans, putting into perspective of his size in a world that would not matter from his abilities demonstrated later, after smelling such an atrocious soup, something that only someone named Garbage Boy could ever make, and it actually sets off something inside Remy, where the figment of Gusto himself encourages him to dive into his passion, his desire for the field he wants to be a part of, coming up with different combinations of food others would only dream of in this shot, where it neatly pans around Remy around the pot of soup, representing the thrill and spice of cooking before being being caught by a shock linguini, who is stunned not only by a rat in the kitchen, but by a rat who can cook in the kitchen, where he is suddenly stopped by Skinner, where he hides Remy and discovers that it looked like he was cooking, something he was not supposed to do as a garbage boy, and then chews him out before the soup gets delivered. And just when you think that everything goes worse in that moment where you think he'd be fired, the waiter reveals that a critic was actually eating the soup and actually giving it high praise. The scenes at first show that Skinner is somewhat still mad thinking that there's some foul play happening behind the scenes with a friend of Gusto's arriving here for a job and seemingly cooking something truly delicious and still ready to fire him, but another cook stops him in the process named Colette saying that shouldn't happen because of what he did and who he impressed, adhering to the principles of Chef Gusto. What belief is that, Mademoiselle Tatou? Anyone can cook. This causes him to let him go at the condition of recreating the soup in order to prove his worth. All eventually find the rat and have Linguini kill it outside. At first, you see him rush all the way down to the river, but because of what he knows, he is still conflicted and still confused that a rat can actually understand him. One of the beauties of this film is the fact that we can both hear humans and rats talk, but in this case, when humans talk, rats can only nod and such because of how small and high-pitched they actually sound to us. We as the audience can understand him when we are put into his perspective, but can't when we switch back to humans because the story wants us to take a more realistic approach to the story. Not in the sense that any of this is actually real because it's not, but it's just more geared to the message about how anyone can accomplish anything no matter who they are. Animals cannot speak to humans because they don't have the language abilities we have, but they do understand us here, where the focus here is more on his abilities to perform physically rather than to speak, and that's what makes their relationship in this movie so unique and perfect, which starts from the scene where Remy tries to gain his trust at first to escape, but actually he changes his heart knowing what he has caused for him. Linguidi then brings him home where his living situation is not much, but brings him to a hell of a sweet view of Pali, leaving us and the TV playing, putting him to sleep to dream in the city of lights. And the next day when they both start learning together, initially, it becomes hard for them to settle in with a rat and human connection, but they make a vital discovery that hair strands can actually turn humans into a rat's personal puppet. A genius move by this movie demonstrating if directed by any force, anyone can cook or master the ability ability to do just that from the moves of a rat. And that's what they get to work right on from the night back home, blindfolding Linguini in order to test the extent of these abilities, where he does so successfully, well almost successfully considering the fact he caused a car crash, and then returning to the next day to finish recreating the soup to a complete success. If anything, I think this would be an excellent learning experience for Linguini to cook on his own considering that he is actually doing it himself but being controlled by a rat. But then again, the show really actually relies 
on Remy, so that's how it's going to be done. This finally puts us face to face with Colette, learning her ambitions and what the rest of the cast are really like. Putting the hammer down that she does not come to play with a miracle worker, a boy who just happens to get lucky on the first day where she was a woman who had to work her ass off to get to the top in the position against the sea of men. It really expands upon the earlier message of the film about how anyone can cook, with the only female in the kitchen who actually proved her worth against the rules set by a group of old men. That other people deserve the same opportunity to be in these positions no matter who they are, and of course seeing someone like Linguini who masters this excellency is a threat to destroying all of that and that progress that we all seek to achieve. Anyways, that's where she actually grills them to show them Le Ropes and understand a bit more of the kitchen staff. The entire staff of Gusto's is consisted of a variety of diverse individuals with different backgrounds, with Germans, Jamaicans, or just French guys who have shady histories. Pompadou is a compulsive gambler who was banned from Vegas to Monte Carlo. La Russe ran guns for a resistance who we would never know because they lost. Lalo ran away from his home at 12 becoming an acrobat but was actually fired for messing around with the ringmaster's daughter and well horse did time for a crime he keeps changing the story to with things like I defrauded a major corporation. I robbed the second largest bank in France using only a ballpoint pen. I created a hole in the ozone of Ravigno. I killed a man with this thumb. And now his story is always the most memorable out of the entire group where most of us kids back in school actually kept quoting how he killed the man with this thumb. And also one where you can interpret his various mysterious stories in many ways. Either he did one of the three or all of them in an elaborate heist that made him do time. Any way you look at it, he certainly is a master at doing so with, with this, this thumb. thumb. So you see, they are artists, pirates, more than cooks, we. Oui? that you can become what you want no matter who you are and Colette thanks Linguini for taking such advice to learn what it truly means to actually be one. And meanwhile, we learn that within Chef Skinner's office, when we discover his ideas for trash microwave food to fatten his own desires, is where he finally reads the letter from Renata, pacing back and forth reading it faster, actually discovering something very shocking that Linguini is the son of Gusto. This is where he gets his lawyer to investigate this as the timing happens when the will of Gusto expires in less than a month and feeds into this argument that everything about Linguini is highly sus and he actually has to get to the bottom of what he knows where he actually sees Remy for a brief moment when he actually comes back to see him disappear. It's kind of messes forth the mind to see if all of this is real or he is just going insane from Linguini's own cooking skills. Eventually twisting his mind slowly for some ulterior motive to get him out of the picture as he is now a threat to everything he holds dear with his position. A night where the customers actually want something new. A new test that Skinner has to put on an old recipe of Gusto that failed but one he could use to put on Linguini as the customers ask for his skills in food to cause a taint in his very reputation with what ingredients are in it. But unknown to him, this actually becomes a great challenge for Remy who knows how to make this a masterpiece. And thus, Sweetbread a la Gusto is born where he rushes to improvise this on the very night and improve the sauce over the veal stomach suggestions. And sadly, right now I haven't seen anyone make this yet. Which is actually a partial reason I made this entire video. As much as Ratatouille is the dish that gets attention in the movie, we just need this recipe for Sweetbread a la Gusto made on YouTube. Not the original one with veal stomach, the one that Remy prepares and finally gets sent out where Remy stops Colette from pouring the original sauce and puts the new one on. And to no surprise, it is a large hit amongst the customers, making Skinner seem so happy on the outside, but on the inside very angry knowing he has failed this test and they are all celebrating with him with millions of new orders along the way. This is where things become more erratic for Skinner, seeing the rat more and more and begs him to investigate Linguni with some 61 Chateau La Tour to make him drunk and expose what exactly is going on, to see if there is a rat out there. Which even when he is drunk, his loyalty to Remy does not even reveal that he is there at all, much to his very disappointment. And fortunately during this time, during this fine night of fine dining, Remy actually finally gets reunited with his brother and the rest of the Rat Clan. And although this is a nice and happy reunion, we learn that Paris has actually truly changed Remy with what he can do and what he wants to do, clashing once again with his father who wants him to stay and live the Rat way. And he tries to show how humans are not kind to rats seeing them as pests no matter what they do, but Remy and his experiences with Linguini proves 
something otherwise that change is actually in nature. That when we grow up, things are bound to change, to be different. The nature of this conflict is to point out discovering who you are rather than who are you supposed to be. And that's where he decides to go back and help Linguini, who starts to have a relationship with Colette, it seems. While Skinner finally sees that Linguini is in fact Gusto's son. Going on this wacky conspiracy rant about him, how he's taunting him with a rat. Appears on the boy's first night. I order him to kill it, and now he wants me to see it everywhere. Ooh, ooh, it's here. No, it isn't. It's here. Am I seeing things? Am I crazy? Is there a phantom rat or is there not? But oh no, I refuse to be sucked into his little game of. Should I be concerned about this? About. You. And during Remy's family's request for access to the bountiful food, Remy actually discovers the truth as well, where Skinner was planning to hide the evidence and goes on this ridiculous chase to stop Remy. Everything leading up to this point was the slow drip of him losing his sanity if there was a rat controlling things and threatening his position and status, and he wants to stop all of that. He ultimately fails because he was literally tracing a rat across all of Paris, returning to discover that they know the truth now and fire him and his cheap microwave Burritos, and now Linguini and Remy get to start living the high life. That is, until Ego comes to test him, when Linguini takes most of the credit for the things that Remy does, and both of them have a falling out with each other, leading him to get kicked and captured by Skinner to help him cook his frozen foods for some reason. And this is where chaos actually presides, where you know that everything Linguini did was the actions of the rat, and without him he cannot do what he did on the very important night where Ego has returned to the restaurant. It's a genuine situation where Remy gets rescued and Linguini feels lost, how they both come back together realizing how much they need each other. They may both showcase how both can really do anything if they had the tools they need, but they need it in each other and that's what's more important between them, the bond between the two, how no one person can accomplish something without the other in the lessons of companionship that we experience with people like Remy Linguini and Colette. But frankly, everyone else in the moment quits because they cannot handle a truth of a rat controlling all the decisions of Linguini, or cooking at all. Understandable from that point of view of a human, but also close-minded by not knowing what he can actually do. Once again, feeling lost, feeling defeated that the day cannot be saved. But then, it becomes a moment where both his dad and Colette, while driving, realizes what has been going on the whole time. How the message of how anyone can cook can apply to everyone. It's a moment back where his dad actually appreciates what Remy wants. His guts and determination to do something and actually succeed at it is what matters to him now, and they help him no matter the cost in the situations, where they actually capture a health inspector and completely take over the kitchen. And this is where Linguini comes out of hiding and gets the idea to become the world's first roller skater waiter at a 5 star restaurant, to serve the customers and of course Ego. And then we actually see the final turn in Colette's heart where she arrives at the sight of rats, ready to do and help whatever Remy wants to do. And in this case, he wants to present Ego with the most basic dishes of all being a ratatouille. Just the simple vegetables to serve to a food critic. And when he goes to eat it, we all see that drastic change in him. That harkens him back to the days of a boy being served by his mom. A complete 180 of his entire heart to become happy the first time we see him smile in the entire film, where it actually shocks Skinner, who is disguised the whole time in the restaurant to see him breaking into the kitchen to discover multiple rats before getting tied up himself. The the beauty of the moment is the breaking of simplicity to ego. How becoming this critic got him to be so pretentious about the high quality of food, becoming far removed from the simpler taste in life that we've all come to know and love. And now a rat has cooked the most basic of vegetable dishes and served it to a renowned critic of food, which eventually humbled him and harkened him back to the days that actually mattered most to him. And learning of the news that a rat actually cooked his meal truly makes him think back on that entire knife to come up with something for his review. Writing something that actually reflects on what is new in life and what that brings to the role of being a critic. There are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. In the past, I have made no secret of my disdain for Chef Gusto's famous motto, Anyone can cook. But I realize only now do I truly understand what he meant. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. 
The words that Ego writes reflect mainly on the themes of the film and how everyone can be great. Not that they can be great or the perfect artist in a particular field, but the artist can truly come from anywhere in life no matter who they are. It's a perspective that causes him to lose his job, sadly, and the restaurant closed because there was rats in the kitchen, and this cuts us back into the present where Remy finishes his story to his friends and family pointing out where everyone is currently. Remy is running this small bistro with Linguini and Colette, where Ego is an investor actually enjoying life now with other people at this popular joint. It truly encapsulates everything about achieving such success, where they all win in the end, even the supposed secondary antagonist who has the change of heart and enjoys everything that the little chef crates where apparently everyone else actually wants a taste too when you look outside at the entire line where this whole movie ends beautifully with the music of Le Fistin looking all over Paris. Ratatouille is truly the story of how me or you can do whatever we want, cooking or anything artistic that we find important to our lives. It's a message that is so simple and universal that we can all strive to achieve. And that's why it is the perfect film to harbor such a message within society's most disdained animals to accomplish so much without any training at all. The message that anyone can cook is really great, showcasing that even the most simple of situations can actually warm our very cold hearts in the cases of ego or anyone else, and our abilities shine when we do what matters truly to our own hearts. It's these stories that tug at your heart that really set this era apart from being that perfect. And with that said, this is a story that will endure for generations to come. And I'm all done now, so goodbye.